Okay, folks, this is my port spare ribs. I've uh, sous vide them uh, for 24 hours. I started at uh, 8 o'clock yesterday morning and uh, knocked them off at 8 o'clock this morning. I've, I've just dried them off and I put some barbecue sauce on to marinate with them now and now I've got to sear them uh, when, we, when we get them ready for tea. Now in the meantime, uh, I did them in this pot because they took a lot of room up. I have sent for a proper container and uh, that will be coming in another two weeks. Apparently, it's probably coming from China. But in the meantime, I've upgraded to uh, an Inkbird sous vide, vid, sous vide, sorry. Um, and uh, I'm just testing it out now. And this can be controlled on your phone. So if I'm sitting in the lounge next to Beryl and I've got it on, I can keep my eye on it without having to keep coming into the kitchen. And if I'm out down the shops and I've got it going, I can keep my eye on it down the shops uh, because it's Wi-Fi. And uh, the other one I've got, is not a lot wrong with it. It's just... Not as powerful, this is 1000 watts, the other one's 800 watts. Uh, you don't need very big wattage uh, to sous vide. You uh, slow cook, it's, it, it, it's like you slow cook on a barbecue. You can slow cook on a barbecue for 15, 20 hours with uh, big lumps of steak and things, you know, uh, and beef. Uh, and that's the idea of it is to slow cook it then because when it comes out it's not the best looking meat you've ever seen but it is tender and it is melting your mouth so you, what you do then you sear it so I've just put some barbecue sauce on it I've made my own up I did some barbecue sauce some um, Worcestershire sauce uh, a a t tablespoon of um, uh, tomato paste and uh, two or three tablespoonfuls of honey for a little bit of sweetness. I used a, a rub on the uh, on the um, on the meat, uh, and it was a little bit too smoky for me so I've had to I've wiped it off best I can but I can still smell the smoke on it I'm not one for smoky on my food unfortunately but uh, I'm, from now on I'm going to make my own rub uh, without all this smoke I don't I, I prefer not to have smoke on my food it's it's not something I, I enjoy in my taste buds so anyway uh, what I've done, I've got some sauce here. I'm going to be basting that when I put them in the pan. And uh, we'll use that and um, see if we can get... Well, I don't know what they taste like. I don't know whether it's a strong tasting rum or not. I got it from Woolies and it was a packet. I probably used a little bit too much, to be honest. But I'm new at this game. <laughs> and I don't normally put rubs on my food, but I thought... Tonight, I'm going to have a go, or today, or the last two days. <laughs> it's not for everybody, um, sous vide. It's, uh, I'm just testing this now. I've got it set to uh, 65 Celsius for something else I've got in the pipeline. And I've got it set for 2 hours and 23 minutes. That's going to be for a piece of pork, pork chops. So I don't know when I'm going to do them, but I am going to be doing them very soon. And uh, it's not for everybody. It's a lot of time consuming. Well, it's set and forget. I mean, you don't do it in 24 hours. You've got it going. 
you don't really do anything. You just put it to one side and wait, if you can wait that long. But you do have to plan. You have to plan ahead. You have to play a, plan at least a day ahead. And if you haven't got the stuff in, you have to plan at least two or three days ahead till you can get the stuff in that you want. Uh, I don't mind that. If it, uh, if the thing is, I've, I've had my uh, my old uh, sous vide machine many many years now, probably eight years or maybe ten years when they first came out, and there wasn't much around on the internet. Or well, I, I don't think we use the internet like we do today. Then uh, there wasn't much information around on how to cook with it. I did have a few goals at it, about three goals, and it's been in the cupboard ever since because everything I tried wasn't very good. And I didn't know that you had to sear the steak afterwards, and it always looked a little bit unappetizing, it, probably the word, but it probably tasted all right. So I didn't have much luck with it, so I put it in the cupboard, and it's been there for many years. And the other day, something came up, and I thought, I'm going to try that. And then I found out they were doing sous vide, and I thought, oh, I'll have to, I'll have to check it out, see if it's still working, and it is still working. But now I've upgraded to the latest uh, high fi stuff. So, uh, and it wasn't there. I got a good buy with this. It was 180 dollars, and I got it for 111. So, it, you know. So you're not paying an arm and a leg for it and it, it's something that uh, if you, the thing is you can actually use the cheapest meats they say topside or, or or chuck roasts or steaks and you you get it like prime beef as tender as prime beef and as flavoursome you don't lose because you do it in a bag you don't lose the flavors and you can use whatever juices do come out uh, you can use as your gravy and uh, I got some from me beef the other day that I did I, that's right I um, I wanted to make some deli beef which I've done and I got uh, something like 48 pieces of uh, deli beef slices and um, I packed them in, in packs of seven and I noticed the uh, last time I bought some I got three slices in a pack for six dollars ninety nine well it comes to eighty four dollars worth of beef in this in the six packs and the beef only cost me thirty dollars and that wasn't the cheapest beef around. I'd already bought that beef, so uh, I used it. Now I'm going to be looking around for some really cheap chuck or top side or, or that sort of thing, the cheapest cuts of meat, and I'm going to test it out myself. But first, before I do that, uh, I'm going to get some nice uh, steaks, and, see, and they look wonderful. But the secret is, You've got to sear it afterwards. See, I did some chicken in it last night. It was still on. It was still being cooked uh, for my uh, pork in bags. And I just put two bags, uh, two uh, separate bags with um, chicken breasts in. And I left them in for two hours. And then I seared them. And we put them on a sandwich. It was bloody delicious. And it was the juiciest chicken I've ever cooked. I'm not saying it's the juiciest chicken anybody's ever cooked, but it's the juiciest chicken I've ever cooked. I tend to overcook things when I do them in a pan. I don't know why. It's a psychological thing, I suppose. I've got to stop overcooking stuff. But uh, that's the way it is. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave you there for now. And I'll show you later on to, uh, when I start cooking tonight. I'll, I'll, I'll add to this video and we shall um, probably have a bit of a taste test. Okay, catch you later.
Okay, folks. Time to sear the ribs. Uh, I've got the sauce ready. I've, I've basted them all ready and let them marinate in the uh, in the barbecue sauce. Uh, just going to put some oil on here. Not looking forward to cleaning this after. But. See if we can get these off without dropping. There's one. Two. Three. Four. I uh, season them before I put the sauce on and the marinade on. I make sure I do that. It's not a bit salty to me, but that's probably the wrong type by being a bit heavy handed. But, from now on I'm, gonna, I'm not going to buy stuff for it. So, you either like it that it turns your mouth off, or all it's the taste is small. Turn them over. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes. They've been cold. So I'm trying to warm them up. I'm not trying to cook them again inside. I'm just trying to warm them up. And then i got to cut them. What do you reckon? They're looking all right, aren't they? You know? So, I'll put them once more, and uh, see we get some more colour on them. Flip them again and that'll do. I've never had much success with servers. Mind you, I haven't done them very often. Very, very rare. And they've usually been, I've usually done beef ones. And I think I've done these once or twice. And I've never had them falling off the bone. They've always been a bit tough. You know, so. I've got the chips going, and these can rest a bit. I'll put some tin foil on them. That's just the bones with the back. That's just a bit of flavour when you're sucking the bones.
Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Alright, we'll just leave them on there in another few minutes. And then we shall take them off. Put them on here. Good side up. I think he was in. Okay, now okay. Okay, here we go. Dishing out time. The chips are done. No air fryer chips in this house anymore. Don't like them. I've got a proper deep pack fryer in there, but geez, it's hard to clean. This pan, I have a container I can put the cold oil in when it cools down tomorrow. And uh, I can wash the pan, I can put it in the dishwasher. But that other thing, there's elements and all sorts of things on it. Right. Put them in there. They're non skill on screen. Bit of salt. That's enough salt. <laughs> right. The ribs. Bit messy. These are barrels. How they look? Plenty of meat on them. And she gets a piece of corn. Blaine, will you do the honours please? Some for lunch tomorrow. Ooh, look at that. Look at that slab. Don't want to get it on the floor. Have a go at that. It's better be good after all the messing around. Uh, 
time that it, the start. Well, I got these from Grinner Brothers. And I don't normally buy them because most of the butchers I've seen of it and calls this, there's no meat on them. You're just buying a bone. At least these look as if they've got some meat on them. Get rid of that. The thing is though, when, you, when you're doing ribs, you do need a fair few of them because there's not a lot on them. You know, it's... Uh oh, I should have turned that off, it's still on. Oh, silly, silly, silly Billy me. And I don't want them falling off the bone too much. I want them to uh, be a bit firm. Well, that's them. Give that the big boy. His corn. My corn. Johnny Bocker. Dish the chips out. Excuse their fingers, the hands, but I... There we go. Right old son. That one. There you go. Now, let's see. No dice and forks tonight, folks. That's mine. I'm going to nick one. Wipe the hands, get the grease off. Bring that up here. A bit more. There we go. Now, we all know what chips are like. Mm. Oh, I, won't get, I won't get the uh, frozen ones that are half cooked. I don't. They, I never get get them right, so I stop getting them. These are chips that haven't had anything done to them. Here we go. Let's have a go. Oh yeah, I'm all of that. Hmm, I made a good sauce, I know that. Mm. 
It's nice inside, not overdone. They've got a bit of a smoke ring there too. <laughs> off the barbecue. Quite a bit of me done that, and that's one of the small ones. Right, two chips. Hmm. Hope you enjoy the video. Tomorrow, for lunch, I'm going to make some deviled eggs. Hope I go at them, and I'm going to do it in the sous vide. I didn't want to call it sous vide. I don't know. I'm thinking of B day. <laughs> sous vide. Mind you, I don't speak French. Never spoke French. People say I'm speaking French if I swear. But that's about it. That is lovely, that, that sauce. Ah. Um, I know I said about the smoke flavour, it's not too painful. Excuse me, I've just spit that all over my floor, I'm going to have to wash the floor now. Uh, yeah, uh, um, is it worth the effort? To get something as tender as that, yes it is worth the effort, to me. Because I've never had spare ribs unless I've bought them out as tender as that. And when you buy them out, they're not cooked when you get there, you know. They're cooking all day. Slow cooking. That's why they're tender. I'll start this one. I'll let you see this one. Look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I can taste the smoke, but I'm not a great smoke lover. And these, I thought they were, the smell, I thought they were going to be very strong tasting, and they're not. But you can taste it. But it's not overpowering. Excuse me talking with my mouthful, but I want to get sat down with the family, you know. The actual work I've done is very minimal. I was going to do them on the uh, cooker top, but I haven't got a pan big enough. <laughs> and I've got some big pans. Well, there you go. Okay, folks. Oh, you can't help. Finger licking. Finger licking good. That beats KFC any day of the week, mate. And I'll tell you what, you pay forty dollars for them for a plate of that in in a restaurant. That's another reason I don't buy them. I don't like paying forty, fifty dollars, even seventy dollars. The other day I saw some for a a plate of bones. I suppose I'm not on my own there either. Okay, as usual. Do all the good stuff. Thanks for staying to the end, if you stayed to the end. Thanks for all your comments. Oh, I got a beauty the other day. It was really nasty. But he got it back. So, we're even now. Uh, I weren't against what he was saying. It was just the way he praised it. And uh, he got me back up a bit. So, I let him have it. I got his back up a bit too. And you know, he criticised me cooking. So I went on his site. He has, he's got two videos on and they're not his. And they're not cooking videos. So he's criticising someone else who's having a go. Uh, 
and he's not done one, and he doesn't, I, to, I, asked, I told him, I said, show me how you do it. I noticed you, on your site you haven't, uh, you haven't got any cooking videos, so show me how it's done, and then I'll take it on board what you've had to say. But he's not going to do that, because he's a, a keyboard warrior. He feels real bloody tough behind that keyboard, I'm telling you. But he's never come across me before, has he? <laughs> they don't get away with that crap. Anyway, like I say, give us a like. Come on, come on, give us a like. Comment. Good or bad, but keep it clean. Don't be nasty. And don't be offensive. I could take criticism, but I'm not taking offence at me personally, which that guy did, right? Not only that, share the video and please consider uh, subscribing to my channel if you haven't already subscribed to my channel. That would be fantastic. And uh, enjoy the video and uh, I'll try and put uh, the deviled eggs on tomorrow and show you how I do them and they're supposed to be the best eggs you can make so we'll see we'll see because I like uh, poached eggs and these are virtually poached in their shell they are a bit hard boiled but not hard hard boiled they're just done till the, sh um, the whites are set and that the, the yolk is not too grainy that's what they say so we'll see tomorrow and then you use sour cream and mustard and all that sort of stuff mix it up get it nice and creamy and put it back in the white and a little bit of fancy stuff on top whatever you've got parsley or onion whatever anyway as i normally say is i'll see you in the next one and tara well, terror happened now.